I remember back in 2013, Worlds, that was the first time winning map was more important than anything else. Because the metagame back then was Heroes for Hire and team bases. And people would play theme teams just so they can win map, go first, and alpha strike. That was really the first time I remember seeing a team go clear across the map in one turn and just annihilate the other person. Uh, Batmite, that was also the metagame with Batmite. Uh, basically, first player would just pass turn one and then go on turn two. That is as a result and consequence of that event and subsequent little events afterwards, the watch list was born. And they put team bases, Shatterstar, Batmite, Heroes for Hire, ATA, heck, even Brother Voodoo, because there's a lot of being able to attack multiple times or just one big attack after being carried or moved or whatever. And that made the game a little bit better. Subsequent changes to the watch list gave rise to tent poles. And though the format was not as degenerate as it was back when winning map meant you won the game, it was still boring because there were only two or three teams people were playing. You know, whether it was Jakeem, Unimine, or Goblin King. And that's basically all you saw. As a consequence of that metagame for those couple years, they added them to the watch list and subsequently made it better. Today, it is more imperative than ever winning to win map and go first in competitive Heroclix Modern Age, uh, to in a lesser extent Bronze Age. Because the way that the game is being designed, designed, there are more options for attacking after being carried, attacking multiple times in a turn, and just cheap, efficient uh, figures that are that have amazing stats, um, and just be basically being able to almost wipe a team out in one turn. So winning the map and having the highest theme team count matters. So going first is more important now than it was, it probably has ever been. The second thing that I see why the metagame is the way it is, is the map design. A lot of the maps now are pretty generic. Um, if there are some maps that are really open or completely completely blocked or really hard to traverse that poses a problem because people are just going to play in those maps and they're going to play teams on those maps and it's almost impossible to win against teams like that if they win if they go first the third thing that i see in the metagame why going first is important is the first player gets to pick map as well as go first that is way too much advantage because of the two factors that I mentioned before. Now the changes that I think could make the game better, uh, more dynamic, more interactive, as opposed to just winning the map roll and an arms race of somebody having a plus 15 on their map roll or something like that. Uh, there are three changes and it's all from those three points that I mentioned. The first one is less design for being able to attack after being carried or attack multiple times in a turn with one character. Um, with the addition of the follow-up mechanic in Empire, that's probably not gonna uh, probably not gonna go down anytime soon. However, if they could just lessen the blow of being, or at least have those characters be more expensive, so that if you do play those pieces it should be a little bit more expensive or a little bit more hard to pull off. Uh, whereas now you can have a piece like Maggot just come up 40 points. So for 80 points, you can come out poison and then hit all in one turn and then disappear. Uh, the second thing that I think that could improve the metagame would be more dynamic map design. 
By that I mean less symmetrical maps. Uh, by that I mean no symmetrical maps. So that the second player has an advantage of picking side. Because if maps that are almost the same on both sides, going second is even less of an... Uh, it's more of a disadvantage because they don't have a side to even defend themselves. So they might as well just randomly pick a side. But if there are map designs where there is some strategic uh, applications to one side or the other, one has a different type of starting area than the other, or different terrain, whatever, that would at least lessen the blow of going second. And the third one, which I think might be the most practical in the sense that the it would almost negate the other two above, uh, is, and this might be the more controversial one, is if you win uh, the option of being first player, you choose either the map or going first, but not both. Now, a couple things. That means... If you pick the map where it's symmetrical, that means the opposing player will go first, which means they can probably alpha you. So that means you have to pick a different map. Or if you go first and they pick the map, at least you still get to go first, get your stuff, whatever the case may be, but at least they can pick a map that can they can defend themselves. And in the case of like location bonuses, it shouldn't be a problem because if you still win the map and you pick your map, you still get your location bonus, they just happen to go first. So at least you both get it, right? You both get what you want. So I think with those changes or any of those changes, perhaps the game could be a little bit less, uh, I'm sorry, the metagame, competitive metagame, at least in the modern age, could be less degenerate and a little bit more interactive, more competitive, and just people won't have to keep playing these plus 10, 11, 12 theme teams just to try to win map you know so at least there'll be a little bit more dynamic team building as well so please like subscribe if you like the content please comment uh, let me know what else you guys want to talk about and i'll be back for more all right until next time guys remember only bad players blame the dice